that down. Everybody got their puzzle piece? Okay, the, the title of my message is Pieces to the Puzzle. Um, and as we've been diving in belonging and we've been talking through what it means to belong and to be a part of the family of God and to be like rooted and connected in community, you know, let me just give us a quick recap. If you have missed the last few services, um, the first week we talked about being a living stone, that, that each one of us are a living stone. We, we, we are alive and we are part of something. We belong to something and you're precious to God and you may be different, you may be unique, but it's part of building the house in the temple of God. Like that, that's, what, that's what God wants to do is to build his house. And so we talked about the micro of the building, the foundation that is Christ and, and we are all living stones. We, we may be different, unique in shape and sizes, but, but we fit in. And, and last week we talked about the family, that, that, that you belong somewhere. And so when you're at home and you're known and, and you're labeling your suitcase and you're unpacking and you're contributing, and so you go from this building and, and you go down to a family, and what I want to talk about this morning is, is the body of Christ, is the person, right? So, so it was macro building and family and now it's person. And that's how the Bible describes the church, the body of Christ, the family of God, the temple of the Lord. And so today we're just going to dig into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to, through 27. Um, and if you're there with me, we can turn there and we will pray. Uh, you can grab your Bibles and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verses 12 to 27. It says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, or if the whole would, would where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the head, to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow greater honor. And on our presentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has composed the body, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffers together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to us through your scripture. You, you have so much to say to us about what you find valuable and precious and honorable. And Lord, as we dig into your scripture today, as we talk about belonging and community and, and the body and the family of God, Lord, would you just speak to us? Would you challenge us, Lord, in areas of our life where we've lacked? Would you challenge us, Lord, in areas of our life where we need to be changed and confronted? Lord, we don't want to just hide the things under the rugs that you want to address. Lord, would you deal with us first so that we could honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, as 
the, the body of Christ, we've been formed to fit and to function as one unit. That's what belonging to means. And so as you look at a piece of your puzzle, you are not the whole picture. I got this really cool 300-piece uh, like puzzle piece, and it's like the nativity scene. I was trying to get like Jesus walking on water or something, but it was like a 1,000 pieces. I was like, we don't have a 1,000 pieces, and they'd be really tiny. So, so, so none of us are the whole piece. All of us are an individual member, but we make up something greater to paint a picture, to display something that God wants to show the world. But we are all individual pieces, and we've all been formed uniquely to fit and to function in a way that no other piece can. Like like when you sat at that chair and you picked up that piece, nobody else can have that piece. There's no substitutes in the body of Christ. Every one of them have been uniquely formed to fit and to function. You've been formed. In your uniqueness, in your individuality, you have been formed just the way God wants you to be. And and the forming process isn't always great. There's the content, and then there's the container. And so I I just think back to Genesis when, when God was creating And God stood behind his creation, essentially, and spoke. And he said, let there be light. And and there was light. And it says, let there there be the fish in in the sea and and the animals on the ground. And, And it just happened. But as soon as he got to mankind, he came and he got the dust of the earth and he began to form it. And he began to shape it in his image and in his likeness. But he just didn't stop with forming it. He breathed into it and he filled it. The forming part of the process has to deal with the container. Like like we are the containers of the very presence of God. And so for God to form us to fill him, for him to fill us with his presence, there is some shaping that has to happen. Now, when the potter sits and begins to mold and shape the pot and he's forming it, it's painful for the lump of clay. Now, now, not for the potter. The potter is fine. But, but if you're a piece of clay on the table, there's some forming that has to happen. When, if you are a piece of the puzzle, there's some forming that has to happen when, when you're being cut. And it's not easy. And sometimes that's where we find ourselves in a church community when we're in the place of being formed and God is challenging us and asking us to change and to look different and to be different, and all of a sudden, what happens? We, we, we run away. The container drifts away from the potter. This has happened all throughout the church. When Paul is writing the letter to the Corinthian church, it's because the church had a ton of drama. The, the church had so much drama that, <laughs> like, he, he, he could only take it one step. He didn't even address all of it. They needed two letters. There's 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians because there's so much drama. I mean, there's sexual immorality. There's sin. There's anger. There's discord. There's disunity. I mean, that's the body of Christ. And even in the midst of all that, he says, you guys are still Jesus' body. In the midst of all your drama, in the midst of all your dysfunction, in the midst of all your anger and frustration, you know what? You're still saints and you're still part of the body. We are responsible for one another because we are not the whole. We're individual pieces. And when there's discord and when there's issues and the container drifts away from the, uh, from the content, um, Howard Truman says it like this, when I have lost harmony with another... My whole life is thrown out of tune. If I lose harmony with my kids, if I lose harmony with my spouse, if if there's tension and and if something is off, we lose harmony. And and that's part of being formed to fit, that you've been filled with the presence of God. And so when a piece tries to connect with another piece and it's off, it doesn't belong there, it creates tension, it creates frustration because it doesn't belong there, it's disharmony. You've been formed to fit and you've been filled with his very presence, but something happens to us and it creeps in into every single individual person in the church and it is this sense of individualism, it's the cancer in the church and it becomes the church of me. 
It's about me. There's a t-shirt that became really trendy that says, I am the church. And it's like, it sounds really cool, and it probably looks really trendy on a t-shirt, but it's really bad theology because I am not the church. (laughs) We are the church. We're individual members of one body. I cannot be by myself. And when we lean into our individualism, what it does is it creates dysfunction in the body of Christ. When we lean into the church of me and what I want, and it's got to be my way or the highway, it creates a cancer in the church. There is a part of being formed that is difficult. Now, if I was to ask you in here to connect with someone, uh, we don't have, if if I was to ask you to grab somebody's hand, we don't have enough people in here for everybody. I'm not going to make you walk around and do that. But what would happen is if you wanted to grab hands with another person that was on the other side of the room, there would be a stretching that would have to occur, right? Like I would have to grab Sean's hand over here and, and pulling and grab Jess's hand over here because there's something about being connected, it crucifies us. There's something about being formed and being connected and being individual members of one another that it causes us to live a life of crucifixion. If I'm going to be connected to one another and the life of God flows through me, it causes me to be crucified. Because when we're connected, the supply of what God wants to do, because remember, you've not just been formed, you've been filled. There's the life of God that he's put in you. There's the spirit of God that he's put in you. You've been filled. And so when I connect with one and I grab a hold of another, the life of God that is in here is transmitted here. Because it's not just about me. It's about getting what God has from here to here. But something happens when we become individuals. The chain is broken and the supply the supply is missing. Something, uh, I don't know if it was a year ago, nine months ago, I, I, I turned my ankle really bad playing basketball, and I just remember it was so painful, like I could barely walk, and, and what ended up happening was it, I, I tried to play on it anyways, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to push through this. I got a high ankle sprain. I'm going to keep playing through it anyways. And I had to overcompensate. And because I overcompensated while I was playing, I ended up pulling my groin. And <laughs> so like this whole side of my leg was like missing. It was like numb, right? Like my ankle is messed up. My groin is hurting. I could barely drive home. And I remember by the time I was trying to fall asleep, like my back started to hurt. And so what started as an ankle sprain affected my whole body. And, and that's what happens in the church when the supply is cut off, when, when one has to do more than it needs to, when, when we're not interconnected, when we become individual members, not of a whole but by ourselves, what happens is other parts of the body have to overcompensate. What ends up happening is, is, is that the whole body suffers because the supply doesn't reach um, its intended goals. You have been formed and you have been filled so you can fit. There's a place where you fit. You are an individual piece of a greater puzzle. And so you've been filled as the body of Christ. You guys still with me? You've been formed and you've been filled. And part of being filled is that you, you, you've been filled with the presence of Jesus Christ. God formed Adam and then he filled him with his spirit and he began to function. You know, when you've been filled with the very presence of God, our responsibility is we're supposed to function in the works of the Lord. And so now that you've been formed and you know where you fit and you've been filled, you're supposed to function. And this is what happens. God formed Adam, he filled him with his presence, and he put him in the garden and said, here's your job. The same thing happened in Ezekiel when when God spoke to Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. And he says, I want you to speak to the valley of dry bones. And I want you you to say to them to come together. And then the, the body came together and the bones and the muscles grew and it became a person. And then he said, I want you to breathe into this body the living spirit of God. And he breathed the breath of God into those bodies. And it says that it stood up as an exceedingly great army. Why? Because as soon as you've been formed, as soon as you 
fit and you've been filled, you have to function. If you don't have a function, it has no purpose. The body of Christ is Christ in body, and there is something that God wants to do through us. It's not for us to just look cute and to do church. We have a function. We have a responsibility because we've been formed and shaped by the creator and filled with his very presence. And he says, when you fit where you need to fit, you'll function. On the day of Pentecost, it says that they were all together in one place in one other court. They were formed into the church. And then the Holy Spirit of God came and it fell on them and they were filled with his presence. And what happened? Peter stood up and he began to preach. There was function. Anytime in the body of Christ when you find yourself formed and filled, you should function. If you don't function, it was funny, we were at Vasa the other day, uh, just yesterday morning I was at Vasa with Issa and we were working out and, and the, the, the whole bathroom was out of service. <laughs> and like the, the, the men's bathroom did not work at all and they had this big sign that said out of service. And, and that's what I see in a lot of Christians' life. Like I just see a big sign that says out of service. Like I have no function. Like you can walk by me, but I'm actually not accomplishing anything. Like I'm supposed to be useful, but I'm doing nothing here. I just kind of show up to church and I take up a pew and I have no function. Those that don't function, man, there was a reason Jesus cursed the fig tree, y'all. There was a reason he walked by it and said, you're not being fruitful and I'm going to curse you because when you're not in service, it causes curses to come upon you. If you've been formed and you've been filled with the presence of God, you should function. There should be something about your life that says, I have something to do. Dietrich Bonhoeffer says it like this, the church is not a religious community of worshipers of Christ, but Christ himself who has taken form among them. It's funny, as my kids have gotten older and older, they would ask me these questions about where is God, where is God, where is Jesus, is he in our heart? Because you know, you hear all these things, like is, is God in the sky, is he the sun, is he in, is, and then you're trying to be like theologically correct with your kids, you know what I'm saying? Like you're like, well, like Jesus is in your heart, but he's, you know, he's also everywhere, he's omnipresent, and he's, he's not the sun, but he's there. And, and, and one of the things you rarely tell them is that, 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 that Jesus Christ, we are the body of Christ, because it's hard for them to understand the function of it. I read this story about a kid who was um, scared during a storm at home, and he cried out to his dad. He says, Dad, I'm scared. It's the storm. Because of the storm, he says, can you just come into my room? If you're a parent in here, and you know your kids always want you to come into the room. They always want you to come into the room, and so you almost have to like trick them into being like, no, you know what, it's going to be okay, just go to sleep. And so in the story, as I was reading it, I identified with the dad. (laughs) I was like, no, you're going to be fine, and the dad yelled back to the son. He says, don't worry, God loves you. He's there with you, and the son yelled back to the dad. He says, I know God loves me, but I need God with skin on right now. And and that's what the church is crying for. That's what the world is crying for, for a God with skin on. And that is us, the body of Christ. Like we are the only hands and feet and mouth and ear of Jesus Christ this world has experienced. And as the world is going through the storm and experiencing its own hardships and frustrations, it's crying out for God with skin on. And it's saying, church, where are you? And we're like, man, we've been formed. (laughs) And we've been filled, and, and I, I don't know where I fit, but, but I fit somewhere, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of hang around in this pew because we've stopped functioning as we should. We're not serving as we should. Like, like, like we're not doing what we need to do. The body of Christ um, is not just an organizational structure. It is a living organism, It's a spiritual body. Where I've seen churches go left quick is when the organizational structure becomes more important than the spiritual body, the organic spiritual body. And so if the church is a spiritual entity, it is a spiritual body, but it also has an organizational structure. The organizational structure has to be down here and the spiritual body up here, the organic life of the church, the supply of God. Where we go left is we can do organizational structures really well. We, we can do it really well. And so we can structurally, organizationally 
do church well, but the life and the spiritual supply of the church isn't flowing. It's amputated. Parts of the body aren't working. We're like mannequins, man. We just kind of look good, and we can dress the part and look the part, but there's no life in it. And I think sometimes we don't serve because we don't understand the spiritual nature, the organic life of the church. And, and this is what we do. And, I, and, I've, and I've seen this so many times, guys, where, where people live in sin in private, and they say, well, this is my life. And I can just live however I want because it's not going to affect anybody else. You know, I, I can watch what I want at home. I can, I can drink and myself into oblivion. I can, I can live however I want because you know what? I'm not hurting anyone else. Like, I'm not murdering anybody. I'm not stealing anything. But you forget about the spiritual life that we are individual members of one another. We're interconnected. And so the life of this piece flows into the other piece. Like, you, you, you can't blacken this out and get the same picture. And so what happens is, is the organization the organic life of the church dies when individual members don't live with a life of holiness, when they don't live the life well, because it grieves the Holy Spirit, it quenches what God wants to do, and so the supply of what God wants to get to you, let me, let me tell you, if I'm not living right throughout the week, it hurts the whole church. You may not think it is, but it hurts the whole church. It's the same way. If you're not living the way you should with Jesus throughout the week, it hurts the whole church because we're not just individual pieces living on our own. We're members of one another. And so what did Paul say? He said, when one suffers, we all suffer. You ever get a stomach ache and you're like, man, this thing is cramping so bad. My stomach's hurting so bad. I got to lay down. I, I just can't move. I can't do what I wanted to do. And when individual parts of the body aren't living organically the way that they should, the whole body has to lay down. It has to stop. We are members of one another. We've been filled and formed to function. And part of that function is living a life with Christ, abiding in him because the life of God flows through him. Because I need you to pray for me. I, I need you to pray for me. It's, it's not a want. It's a need because the body of Christ is an organism. It's organic. You need to pray for one another. You need to show up for one another. And what happens when we're not living right with the Lord is we, we drift away from our responsibilities of caring for one another. And that's what Paul is saying. He's saying we're all different. We all have different giftings. But all of them is coming around this organic life of God. Are we still good? You guys still with me? So let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 um, because Paul begins to talk about how you function in, in our responsibility. Like, like, like this is a, a small piece. And I'm not a big puzzle person. Like, I don't like to make puzzles at home. But I know how frustrating it is when, when you have pieces, pieces of the puzzle that are missing. It, it, it's just, you just can't, you just don't want to work on it any longer, right? Like, I would just assume, like, you're just like, I'm just going to give up because you have portions missing. But it takes time as you're building your puzzle for each piece to find exactly where it fits in the picture it's trying to make. And this is what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, I love the, the, the oh, it says unity in the body, which is the main uh, context of this. And this is what Paul says to the Ephesian church. And he says, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness of deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, for whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. That when you find where you fit, 
that you are a part of maturing. You're part of growing. Like, like my job is not to do the work of the ministry. I love that it says this. It just takes all the pressure off pastors and leaders. Like, like, like our job is not to like do all the work of the ministry. It is really to equip the rest of the body to see exactly where you fit and to see what you have, what God has put in you, how he's filled you. Because you know what? It doesn't matter how great I am or April is or the worship team is. or did. It doesn't matter how great we are individually. That doesn't matter because we can't grow into the maturity into the full measure of Christ until we all fit where we need to. That's what Paul is saying here, until we all grow. So I like how they say in, in teams, when, when, when you have like different teams, they'll say like you're only as good as your weakest player. Like I love that. Because it's not about how good we can get individually. It's how we develop those that are with us because we're part of a team. We're part of a body. And if there is a weak part of our body that's underdeveloped, then we have to grow that so we can grow into the full measure of Christ. There is a place where you function. My job, our job as a community, say, where where do you fit? Where does the life of God fit there's a story only you can tell. There's something that only you can do. You don't have to be a great preacher, worship person, media person. You don't have to do that. But there's something you do really well. And part of this thing we do, church and community, is the discovery of the work of finding pieces and putting them where they need to go. So we can paint this picture for our community. It says, this is God with skin on. Like, we are a community, and we are all individual members, but we're responsible for one another. We're all unique, and we're all different, and we all have different gifts, and we all have something different to bring to the table, and we honor that. I love when Paul writes to the Corinthian church about honoring other areas that maybe are modest, maybe aren't as great, maybe aren't great stage presence, but he says, you know what? Like, what we do with our bodies is we honor those parts more because they're not visible, There's a place where you function. Part of that is just a discovery. If you don't know where you fit at Anchor, if you don't know where you belong, one of the things I did as an intern when I was in Bible college was I tried everything. I tried children's ministry. I learned very quickly that was not for me. I love kids, I love children's ministry, but I got in there and I was like teaching the kids and I was like, man, this ain't for me. And I did, I did media. I was the guy in the camera in the back and, and it was a big church and so I was like sitting on the chair and I, I tried every different ministry opportunity. I did the street evangelism. I did the feeding the homeless. I tried it all because I wanted to see, David, where did you fit and where does your story, where does your gifting, where does your uniqueness Where does the life that God has put in you flow best? Where do you fit? And then when I went from one place to another place, I had to find, where did I fit here? Now, now I'm not in Dallas anymore, and and I'm in Denver, and I'm working in different groups. Where do I fit now? Where does my unique, individual, formed spirit of God fit? And sometimes you just got to try different things until you see where you fit best. Um, I'll close with this story. Well, um, I I think God is um, not looking for individual vessels to act alone, to be honest. I I really don't believe in, like, the superstar pastor stuff. I I really don't think, like, that's not what God is smiling and being like, man, they're so awesome. Like, I don't don't think individual actors operating on behalf of God is is not it. I I think he's looking for a corporate body to act together. I think when Peter got up there and preached... On the day of Pentecost, the other 11 stood with him, and they said, yeah, we're with this guy, because it was a corporate body standing together, not an individual acting alone. And when you fit somewhere and you're trying to find where you fit, it's not about what you can just do, but it's what you can do together. And so uh, one of the cool stories I remember in the NBA years back was um, a player by the name of Anderson uh, Verjao. He was like the last man on the Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team. <laughs> um, and he, he was like the, the last guy on the rotation. He was the last one on the bench. And then he ended up getting traded to the Golden State Warriors. And he was the, like the last man on the bench at the Golden State Warriors team. And so because he was on the Cavaliers for about half the season, um, and then he was traded to the Golden State Warriors, they played in the finals. And so Anderson Verjao was on both teams at one point. And so what ended up happening was whoever won the championship 
Regardless, Anderson Verjal was going to get a championship ring because he was on both teams. He was going to win regardless. At one point, he was on the team. That was, even though he did the least, he didn't, he didn't function very well, but he was on the team. And, and that's the thing about the body of Christ. Is we're, it's not about superstars, individualism. It's about being part of something bigger than ourselves and finding exactly where you fit. You may be new to Anchor, maybe your first time, and, and that's why I love Sean and his wife, Avery. You know, they've been here for about a month, and, and I'm like, man, where do you fit? Like, where, what's your experience? And because for us, it's about getting people using and operating their gifting, operating in their skill set. It says, man, this is where you can fit. I, I want you to use your gift. I want you to show, I want you to do what God has called you to do because that's where you fit, and that's where you function. I believe in a church, they, they usually say churches have the 80-20 rule. I don't know if you've heard of that 80-20 rule where 20% of the people do 80% of the work. 20% of the people give. It's, it's the 20-80 rule, and, and I'm really believing Anchor Church will be 100. 100% of our people serve. 100% of the people that call us home know where they fit. They know where they belong. 100% contribute. They do their part. Why? Because none of us are individual members of each other. None of us are living this thing out by ourselves. We belong to one another. And when one of us suffers, we all suffer. But when one of us has success, we all have success. And so as we pray and respond and as we're about to do communion, I, I want you to think to yourself, where do I fit? Where do I, where, where do I fit here? And if I don't know, I, I got to try. I got to try. That's what you do when you're working on a puzzle piece, right? You just you just keep trying it in different places, and you, you start to say, uh, does, does this look like it goes here? And, you know, you just kind of try, and maybe for you, you're in a season of just trying. Okay, like, let me try this. Let me, let me get involved here. And as you do, you'll find where you fit best, and the life of God that is in you will flow as it should. There's something you have to contribute. You know, what I love is there's no substitutes in the kingdom of God. There's no substitutes. I can't substitute a kidney for a heart. There's no, what you have to offer is so unique and is so important and so precious to the body of Christ. Like we can't do this thing without you. And if you see the importance of your engagement in the body, just see how important you are. As Paul said to the Ephesian church, we all grow to the measure of the stature of God. Maybe for some of you, you've been part of Anchor for a long time and you've been sitting on the sideline. This thing, Christianity, is not a spectator sport, man. We don't get to just watch. Like, I love football, and I'm just like, I wish they would just call me in, man. To be honest, like, dude, if I was, like, in an NBA game, could you imagine, like, you're playing an NBA game, and you're in the stands, and they're like, man, somebody got hurt, and they're like, okay, come on off, come off the bench, come out of the crowd, and, and I want you to get in the game, man. That's what God does for us. Like, the importance of your involvement it's life-changing for somebody. Your story is life-changing for somebody. But if, if you don't find where you fit, the life doesn't flow. So don't sit on the sidelines. Don't, don't be a spectator. Get involved. And so we're going to pray. We're going to respond. Our communion elements are in the front. We'll take some time to worship and pray. And again, if you need prayer or anything, there are people here that will pray with you. Um, and I'll just invite us all to stand together as uh, we, we get ready to close. Lord, we, we love you. We thank you, Lord.